Thomas Cook. Well, thank you very much. I'll start by saying I just spoke with Boris Johnson, and we had a good talk about a number of subjects, and we'll maybe talk about it a little bit later. Uh, but we had an extended conversation and uh, some pretty good ideas, I think. Uh, they want to see if we could do a couple of things, and uh, they'll be doing certain things for us. I want to uh, also thank the Minneapolis Police Department. They have been so incredible, what they've done. Tomorrow, we have uh, a tremendous amount of people plan to go. I know the requests have been incredible. So I think uh, it's a great state, and we're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow night. I think a lot of you are going to be with us. And then on Friday night, we'll be going to Louisiana. And uh, there's a big election on Saturday to see whether or not there's a runoff, most likely. And uh, I think uh, we'll do very well. The Republicans are doing very well, despite the witch hunt that they have on Republicans. So I just want to uh, thank everybody for being here, coming to the White House on this important occasion. In a few moments, I'll be signing two executive orders to expand our record-breaking regulatory reduction campaign that is helping to fuel our incredible economic boom. I guess the stock market's up close to 250 points today. And uh, this is despite lots of trade deals that are getting done one by one. We did a deal with South Korea, big one, really big one. And we did one uh, yesterday with Japan. And that now goes into effect, and uh, it's tremendous for our farmers. Uh, as you know, uh, we have China coming. Uh, they'll be coming tomorrow. Uh, we have the Vice Premier of China coming. So we have a lot of big things happening. We have some tremendous deals under negotiation. So despite all of that, we have a great economy and a great market. Our housing market's on fire, and uh, things are really doing well. You look at Asia, they're not doing well. Look at China's. China's having a hard time at this moment, and I think they'd like to make a deal very badly. And so we have a lot of things that are really exciting, and to be in the midst of negotiating some of the worst trade deals ever made, uh, and to be breaking them up and changing them for the good of the American taxpayer and for our country and uh, to still be doing so well. We had over 100 record-breaking uh, stock markets, I think in 121 or something. I'll get you the exact number. But many, many days, we broke the record. And we continue to do well. And when these trade deals are done and when certain other things that we're doing are done, it's going to be at a level that's incredible. That was the cutest noise. What was it? <laughs> I heard this. See, I'm used to hearing them. <laughs> And there's nothing cute about them. <laughs> so beautiful. And don't feel bad. He can just do whatever you want. Okay? <laughs> That's a beautiful sound. Today, we take bold new action to protect Americans from out-of-control bureaucracy and stop regulators from imposing secret rules and hidden penalties on the American people. We're delighted to be joined on this occasion by Acting Director Ross Vogt, who has really done a fantastic job. Deputy Attorney Jeffrey Rosen. Are you busy enough, Jeff? <laughs> uh, and Congressman Mark Meadows. Mark, fantastic that you're here. Louisiana Solicitor General. Oh, I'll be there. Liz Murrell. Where's Liz? I'll see you on uh, Friday. I don't know if you'll be there, but we have a big crowd, so it's going to be great. Thank you very much, Liz. And several other state and local officials, we want to thank you all for being here. For many decades, federal agencies have been issuing thousands of pages of so-called guidance documents, a pernicious kind of regulation imposed by unaccountable bureaucrats in the form of commentary on how rules should be interpreted. All too often, guidance documents are a backdoor for regulators to effectively change the laws and vastly expand their scope and reach. Guidance has frequently been used to subject U.S. citizens and businesses to arbitrary and sometimes abusive enforcement actions. Huh. 
It sounds like they're talking about me. <laughs> I think they're talking about me. I might have a conflict in signing this deal. <laughs> because of these materials and the fact that these materials are too often hidden and hard to find, many Americans learn of the rules only when Federal agents come knocking on the door. This regulatory overreach gravely undermines our constitutional system of government. Unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats must not be able to operate outside of the democratic system of government. Wow. Imposing their own private agenda on our citizens. A permanent Federal bureaucracy cannot become a fourth branch of government unanswerable to American voters. In America, the people must always reign. With us today is Andy Johnson from Wyoming, great place, whose family is one of many that suffered from the absurd redefinitions and interpretations of Federal bureau bureaucrats. And Andy is uh, here to say a few words. I'd like to hear that, Andy, because I think you might be speaking about me or to me. Thank you very much. Where's Andy? Come on up here with that beautiful baby. Beautiful. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Andy. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, please. Well, thank you for having me today and my wife, uh, Morgan, and my son, Roan. Uh, I work as a welder in Wyoming. And about five years ago, um, when I applied for a stock pond permit for my private property, uh, I had no idea that the EPA would come knocking at my door and threaten me and my family civilly, criminally, and a fine of $37,500 per day. Uh, the fines were up to $16 million when um, Pacific Legal Foundation stepped in and sued the EPA on my behalf and my family. And at that point, the EPA changed their attitude. We were able to come to an agreement. We won our case, but unlike a lot of other middle class Americans, um, that's, that's not the case. They, um, we, we could have never fought. Uh, the litigation was way, way too expensive. So I'd just like to thank the President today for signing this executive order, which will hold the EPA and other uh, government agencies more responsible for their actions. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. So they had you up to $16 million? But that's peanuts for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Glad it worked out and it's working out even better. We're also joined by Richard Schrock, who was prevented from expanding his business because of the obscure regulatory guidance on a rule from the 1980s, an old rule. And Richard, please come up and uh, talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to speak and bringing much needed attention to the reform to the rulemaking process used by the regulatory agencies. I operate a family owned business in Fairbanks, Alaska. We purchased some land for our business about 20 years ago so we could move operations out of town uh, to the new facility uh, and expand our facilities. We've spent the better part of 10 years and over $300,000 fighting with the regulatory agencies over the arbitrary and capricious nature of the Army Corps of Engineers wetland designation and their use of the Alaska Supplement versus the 1987 Congressionally Mandated Wetlands Manual. This effort does also, this effort does not include the time and energy put forth by the Pacific Legal Foundation on our behalf. I'd like to thank those folks as well. The last straw for us uh, was when we lost our appeal in the Ninth Circuit Court uh, when they held that the agencies can make the regulations they want and require uh, without congressional approval or oversight. I'm hopeful that the changes made today with this executive order, uh, other landowners will not be negatively impacted as we have. Thank you again for this opportunity. That's great. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Richard. You know, you mentioned the Ninth Circuit, so we have a lot of great new judges in the Ninth Circuit. And uh, we're going to be very close to 182 new judges over the next very short period of time. So that'll be uh, — we are in record territory by a lot. 
So we're going to have 182 new federal judges, not including two Supreme Court judges. Uh, and I guess we're already at the 156 number, Jeff and Mark. I think we're at about 156 judges now signed and sitting and doing a great job. But we'll be at about 182 before we normalize. Normalize meetings, retirement, and various other reasons that they leave. And uh, we could average about 40 or so a year from that process. So we'll have a, a probably a very big record number of judges, federal judges, in this administration. And I want to thank President Obama for leaving us 138 empty slots, because that's a first. That's a first. I said, how many do we have? He said, sir, you have 138 to 142. I said, you got to be kidding. So uh, I want to thank you, President Obama. And again, Richard, thank you very much for uh, your nice words. When Americans and their businesses are sued by government agencies, they're sometimes not even given an explanation of what they do wrong and how they can fix it. With us today is Kevin Looney, whose company was forced out of business through the terrible practice of a certain way of government handling of things. Not fair, not right. Kevin, please come up and discuss it. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. My name is Kevin Lenny. I'm a third generation cattle rancher at the Point Reyes National Seashore in California. About th several years ago, we also were the owners of the Drake's Bay Oyster Farm, a sustainable family business where we produced nearly half of all the oysters in the state of California. In 2014, the National Park Service launched a National Environmental Policy Act process that cost millions of dollars and lasted over eight years, and the National Park Service forced our oyster farm out of business. Um, and if that wasn't enough for our family and our community, uh, today, the rest of agriculture, which includes about another 24 ranching family farm businesses within the National Seashore, are facing the exact same process. Um, our fear is that that process could ultimately be facing, and those families may be facing what the oyster farm faced. And so I'm here, Mr. President, thanking you for calling this meeting together so we can have this discussion. We urge you to continue your good work in following these policies and making sure these federal policies are managed in a way that family farmers and ranchers like us can actually benefit and survive these, uh, these, these procedures. And so they're not just for federal agencies that have pre-decided what they want before the process has begun and for professional litigants that abuse the process. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Kevin. And the business is, is the business gone now? The or? business is gone. 20 million oysters destroyed. Wow. They forced you out of business? Yes. So I have to say, Kevin, I've re really, I know what you've been through. I read a little bit about it, and I've heard about it also. And it's uh, very sad. But we thank you both for being here very much. Really, thank you very much. No American should ever face such persecution from their own government, except perhaps your president. Don't feel bad, Kevin. <laughs> they treated you better than they treat me. <laughs> I do believe that's true. Huh? I do believe that's true, Meadows. Today, I'm taking action to stop it. My first executive order will require agencies to publish guidance documents online so that small businesses and everyday citizens can easily find them. Agencies will have to seek public input on the most important guidance, and the whole process will be closely overseen by the White House. We're going to have somebody right here in the White House looking at it, Kevin, so this doesn't happen to other people. You're very brave to be here. I really think it's incredible. I really mean it. Americans will no longer be subject to the rules of hidden games that are played on the public. The second order I will sign today will protect American citizens from secret interpretations of regulations 
unexpected penalties and violations of their rights. From now on, agencies will be required to inform individuals about any case against them and respond to their arguments. It will be the agency's duty to fully educate small businesses about new regulatory changes. Today's action is just the latest step in my administration's tireless fight to curtail job-killing, soul-crushing regulations. I want to thank Jeff for doing the great job. The Justice Department worked very hard with all of our people over here. They did a fantastic job, and I want to thank you very much, Jeff. We ended the war on American energy. We're canceling restrictions that devastated American auto workers. We're stopping regulations that micromanaged our great farmers. We're bringing major companies back to our country. They want to be here with a hot economy. We're the place they want to be. And we're reversing the last administration's ridiculous attack on, as an example, incandescent light bulbs. Uh, we're also working, as you know, uh, cars are very expensive, far too expensive. And uh, we're going to be able to bring the price of cars down about $3,500 and, at the same time, make the car a lot more affordable uh, and a lot safer. So we're going to have affordability, safety, and we'll also be getting some of the old cars off the roads because people now have an incentive to buy a new car that's a lot uh, less of a problem from an environmental standpoint. It's really an amazing thing. We're going against California. And uh, they make their cars so light, it's paper mache, and you get in an accident, it's very, very dangerous. So we're uh, coming out with a whole new standard, and I think it's going to be something very special. It's gotten tremendous receptivity. Same thing with the light bulb, the incandescent lights. Uh, aside from the fact you look better, of course, who cares about looks? But you do look better with incandescent. They weren't allowed. And uh, you have the privilege of buying now a much more expensive bulb under the past rules. Much more expensive bulb that doesn't have a good-looking light, but maybe, very importantly, uh, when the bulb is out and no good, it's literally considered a hazardous waste site because it's all the gases. And if it breaks, you're supposed to bring it to a certain location. And I say, who does that? Nobody. Nobody does. It's very dangerous. So we have uh, — uh, we're allowing people to choose. They can buy a much less expensive bulb that looks better, or they can spend a lot more money on on what they were doing, and that's fine, too. They might like it. Uh, it might last longer, and that's okay. But it is still a hazardous situation when you have to dispose of these things, whereas in the old system, you don't have. So we're bringing the incandescent bulb back. For those that want it, we're going to have both alternatives. We like to have alternatives. At the start of my presidency, I imposed a two-for-one rule on new regulations, requiring that for every new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. In the first two years of the Obama Sleepy Joe Biden administration, the cost of regulatory compliance went up by $245 billion. Can you believe that? And in our administration, we've taken it down by more than that. So it's $245 billion up, and we've taken it down by much more than that. According to the Economic Council of Advisors, our regulatory reductions will save the average American household over $3,000 think of this — every single year. Thanks to these regulation cuts, as well as our tax cuts and pro-American trade policies, our economy is stronger than it's ever been, stronger than ever before. And that's despite all of these negotiations that we're doing to really make us into something that we've never seen before, meaning fair trade deals. We have created 6.4 million new jobs. Just last month, unemployment reached the lowest rate in over 50 years. The African-American, Hispanic-American, Asian-American unemployment rates have hit record lows. We have more people working in the United States today, almost 160 million people, than at any time in the history of our country. Wages are rising very fast and twice as fast for low-income workers. The biggest beneficiary, actually, is the low-income worker. The wages are rising at a rate that we haven't seen in many, many decades. When I first started campaigning, many of you were with me. I used to talk about workers that would make more years ago, 21 years ago, than they made a few years ago, because now it's gone up a lot, but a few years ago. And they'd have two jobs and three jobs, and yet they did better 21 years before. 
With today's executive order, we continue this incredible economic success, and we defend American liberty for generations to come. I would like to now invite Acting Director of OMB, Russ Vogt, to say a few words about the exciting news. And I want to thank Russ for doing an incredible job. And when Russ is finished, we're going to sign the executive orders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. As a result of your leadership, Today, we're making a major step forward in the effort to drain the swamp and to get our arms wrapped around the administrative state. We can't do that until we know all of the dark regulatory stealth regulation that is out there. And that's one of the reasons why we're asking all agencies to be putting on their website, on a searchable website, all of these regulations so that we can understand what it is and anything that's not put up there is rescinded. Secondly, we want to make sure that the American people, families and small businesses, are no longer bullied by their federal government. We've all had to deal with the, the motor vehicle department down the street from us. Think about dealing with the federal government. It's an entirely different situation, and the people that are here today who have flown in on their own dime to be a part of this celebration can attest to that. We want to make sure that there are no stories ever again of people being bullied by their, by their federal government. And so we're thrilled uh, that you took this on, Mr. President, looking forward to these executive orders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much.